uh, season challenge. As you come on, those that are watching on Facebook Live, would you please share? And of course, those who've signed up uh, for the 2020 challenge, I wanna welcome you uh, to the special evening edition and challenge you as we get ready to move into a new decade, a new season. As you see, I'm wearing my, uh, it's my 2020 season. This is a hoodie um, that I'm wearing and that uh, we have t-shirts available. Second Chronicles 2020, believe in the Lord your God uh, and you will be established. Believe his prophets and you will prosper. That's what we're gonna talk about tonight. I'm gonna give more time and attention to it than I usually do on social media. And uh, also I have a book entitled uh, 2020 Season Established and Prospering. 2020 Season Established and Prospering. This book is available at AP Club Global as well as the t-shirts and hoodies. Um, and it is a word that God gave me um, months uh, in the month of August. As a matter of fact, I was preaching in New York City with Dehema McLean. And as I concluded the, the service, I heard that phrase, it's my 2020 season. I began to sing a prophetic song concerning 2020 season and 2 Chronicles 2020. If you believe in the Lord your God, you'll be established. And if you believe his prophets, you will prosper. This book, I deal more with the establishing aspect of 2 Chronicles 2020, especially the establishment of the church, how the church was established in the book of Acts in the midst of so much opposition and persecution, uh, God established his church. And since that time, the church has grown. The government of God has grown from generation to generation. And my premise is this. And again, as you come on, please share. My premise is this, that whatever is established will eventually prosper. And the enemy does not want you to be established in your faith, in, in, in the prophetic, in deliverance, in worship, in the word of God. He does not want you to be established in your business, your career, your marriage, or your life. He wants to keep you unstable and wavering. And so it's important to let the Lord establish us. And of course, the verse says, believe in the Lord your God and you will be established, which means it takes faith and believing in God to become established. So I'm gonna talk about that tonight, the establishing part, and then I'm gonna talk about the prosperity part, uh, which says, if you believe in his prophets, you will prosper. And then I'm gonna talk about the word rush. Many of you have been seeing all the posts I've been doing on my social media page, and I'm gonna write a book called Rush. Uh, it's my 2020 season. The word rush is a word that God has given me as well to talk about. As we get ready to move into the, the, the natural year 2020, um, we're believing God for spiritually become 2020 believers. Now, 2020 can represent vision, having 2020 vision, seeing clearly. Uh, it can represent, again, being established and prospering, uh, experiencing the rush of God, the, the rush of favor, the rush of prosperity, the rush of the wind of God, the rush of the spirit of God. That's what we're talking about tonight in this challenge tonight. It's my 2020 season. And for those who are coming on, who may not have signed up for the challenge, but you're coming on my social media page, again, please share, uh, please invite others to be a part of uh, this uh, special edition uh, called the 2020 uh, season. Again, the foundational scripture is 2 Chronicles 2020. I encourage you to memorize the verse, to look it up, believe in the Lord your God and you will be established. In other words, you'll be uh, set. You'll have a firm foundation. Uh, you will be rooted. You will be grounded. You'll be unmovable. And another verse the Lord has given me is a very common one, which says that Jesus said, he that builds his house upon a rock, uh, when the floods come and the winds blow, the house stands. But he that builds his house upon the sand when the winds blow and the floods come, the house will fall because you cannot establish a house on sand. The sand is always moving. It's always shifting. It's not a firm foundation. But if you build your house, your life upon the rock, uh, upon Jesus, upon the word of God, if you become established in the rock, in Jesus, in the word of God, 
Then no matter what comes your way, no matter how many storms come your way, no matter how many winds blow your way, you will never fall because you have become established. So it's important to be established. The Bible talks about when David was established as king. He went through a season in which he was running from Saul, even though he was anointed to be the king, he was not yet established in his kingdom. But after a season, he became established. And once he became established as the king of Israel, uh, he began to really prosper. He began to extend his influence, his dominion over all the nations surrounding him. So if we believe God, we will be established. And as you hear this message, I want you to believe God to establish you. Now, there's certain things that all of us need to be established in. Uh, we need to be established in truth. We need to be established in the word of God. We need to be established in the prophetic. We need to be established in miracles and healing and faith and deliverance. We need to be established in worship. We need to be established in righteousness, in holiness. Uh, we need to be established um, in, in different truths that God is releasing, not just hearing a truth, but becoming established in it becoming so rooted and grounded in that truth until you begin to prosper. And again, the, 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 the Lord established the church. And that's what this book talks about, the establishment of the church. Now think of this. In the book of Acts, the church was established in the midst of persecution, opposition, demonic attack. But in the spite of that, God established his church. And his church has been on the earth now for 2,000 years. Now, the church has had many challenges. Um, it's had many scandals, but the church remains strong on the earth. Why? Because it was established. And from the upper room with 120 people, God established his church. And since that time, millions have been swept into the kingdom of God over 2,000 years. Multitudes have come into the kingdom and of course, Isaiah 9 and 7 says, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. It will continue to increase and grow and expand. Sometimes in some nations, it looks like the church is decreasing, but in other places, it is, other places, it is exploding. I just heard a testimony of what's happening in Iran. Underground church is growing so fast and it's primarily being led by women without buildings, China, there's an underground church, certain parts of the world, churches are growing so exponentially. Why? Because God is committed to increasing his church and his kingdom from generation to generation. Why? Because he established it. Upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not uh, prevail against it. Now ask yourself tonight in this challenge, what areas of your life do you need to be established in? What truths did you need to be established in? What, what truths are you still wavering in? What truths are you still unstable in? Um, what, what areas of your walk with God that you need to be established in? Do you need to be established in prayer, your prayer life, your worship life, your study life, your, 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 your character? Um, what do you need to be established in as a child of God? That's what we're looking at as we get ready to talk about being established. What truths does, does your church, your ministry need to be established in? Do you need to be established in the prophetic? In, do you need to be established in deliverance? Uh, do you need to be established in faith? Do you need to be established in miracles and healing or worship or glory? Uh, do you need to be established in evangelism? What area of your life do you need to be established in? Because as long as you're not established you're not going to be able to prosper in that area. And so it takes faith to be established. How does faith come? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so it's important to hear the word of God concerning certain truths, to read books, to study, to hear God's word so you can become established in that particular truth. I, I can look at my own life in ministry. And I began ministering in 1979. That's 40 years ago. I began to preach. Now, I wasn't established in certain truths. Uh, I was established uh, in holiness. I, I, I got established in being filled with the Holy Spirit. Um, I got established in praise, but I was not yet established in deliverance. 
I got established in that around 1984. I began to study the subject of deliverance. I became established in that truth and I've been preaching and teaching on deliverance now for about 35 years. And then around 1989, um, I began to hear about the prophetic and prophecy. Um, I began to be taught in that area. I got established in the prophetic. So I've been moving in the prophetic about 30 years. And then around 1990 and 1991, I got established in the apostolic. I began to preach and teach and hear about the apostolic ministry. Uh, during that time, we our church got established in prophetic worship in the whole glory realm. And so these are things that I became established in over my life uh, as I began to hear the word of God. And it brought a prosperity into my life uh, as a result of being established. I began to prosper in these areas. So being established is very important. There are too many people that are wavering, they're double-minded. The scripture says, a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. James chapter one, I've done a lot of teaching on double-mindedness, schizophrenia. The scripture tells us this, be, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. That means to be set, to be rooted, to be grounded, to become established when nothing moves you, to become set, uh, to become set or to be developed on a firm foundation. Whatever area of truth you need to be established in, tonight's challenge is to challenge you to get established in that area, to hear the word of God in that area, to study that particular area, to get set in that area. It may not be an overnight thing. You may have to hear the word of God over and over and over again until you become established in it. As the scripture says, one plants, another waters, but God gives the increase. And so we do need to understand that sometimes you get planted or you hear the word of God as a seed. Sometimes someone comes and waters that seed. You hear different preachers preach on a particular subject. Uh, by the way, around 1980, I skipped one. I got established in faith. I, be I became a part at that time of the Word of Faith movement. Uh, I began to hear about faith. Faith comes by hearing about healing, about prosperity, about the integrity of the Word of God, about the authority of the name of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit. I got established in speaking in tongues and praying in tongues. I, I got established in these truths by listening to different faith preachers at that particular time. And then as I got involved in deliverance, I heard different ministers preach on deliverance. And over a period of time, I got established in that particular area. And so I've become established in certain truths in my life, holiness or the Holy Spirit, faith, healing, prosperity, giving, uh, deliverance, the prophetic, the apostolic, the kingdom. I became established in those truths over a period of time by hearing different ministers, by studying, by focusing, by concentrating, and by really believing, believing. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so again, if you believe in the Lord your God, you will be established. And as I talk about this 2020 season, it's a season in which God wants to establish us. God wants to take the, the shakiness out of your life. God wants to take the wavering out of your life. God wants to take the instability out of your life. God does not want you to be on an emotional or spiritual roller coaster. He does not want you to be like a spiritual ping pong ball back and forth. He does not want you to be a spiritual yo-yo up and down. He wants you to be consistent. He wants you to be steadfast. He wants you to be instant in season, out of season. And so this season that is coming up, I'm calling it a 2020 season in which the Spirit of God is moving in our lives to set us, to establish us, to build us on a firm foundation, to root us, to ground us so we can become set that no matter what comes our way, no matter who comes, no matter who leaves, no matter what changes, no matter if the political situation changes, the economic situation changes, you are so established in the things of God until as the scripture says, you are steadfast, you are unmovable, you are always abounding in the work of the Lord. And to be a part of an established church, a church needs to be established. The church is built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself 
the chief cornerstone. So it takes apostolic and prophetic anointings often to establish us in certain truths. We often talk about the prophetic and the apostolic. These are not just titles. Uh, these are not just names. These are anointings that can establish you, that can preach to you and teach to you and get you set and rooted and grounded. Sometimes when you first hear a truth, it's brand new. Sometimes you even reject it. Uh, the scripture that comes to me is it says, no man having drunk old wine straightway desires the new for the old they say is better. Some people actually are more established in tradition and religion instead of being established in the things of the spirit of God. And so when something new is pre presented to them, a new word, a new revelation, sometimes they don't receive it. But the more they hear it, no man having drunk old wine straightway, immediately desires the new. But eventually you get a taste for it. And then once you get exposed to apostolic and prophetic ministers who have certain revelations that they preach and teach, um, you eventually become established in that truth. Sometimes these anointings have to come and uproot some things in order for you to become established. They have to root out. They have to pull down. They have to destroy. They have to build. Uh, they have to plant. Uh, as God told Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter one, I've called you to root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down, to build and plant. So sometimes things need to be uprooted. Uh, traditions, religious teaching, even false teaching that we've heard. Uh, we've been established in, in denominationalism, in religion and tradition. And so when God wants to establish you in something new and something fresh, if it's not based on what you've heard before, um, if you're not careful, you can miss a move of God, a, 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 a move of the spirit. Uh, but if you get exposed to apostles and prophets who have a strong anointing to establish, to, to pioneer, to set people in truth and revelation, uh, to, to preach a word, not only to give you insight, revelation, understanding, but to establish you in that particular truth. That's what apostles and prophets do. Now, evangelists, pastors, and teachers can also do that. So I'm not, I'm not putting down those other gifts. I'm just saying that one of the major functions of apostles and prophets is to establish people in new revelation, uh, truths that, that maybe they've not been established in before, doctrines that have been overlooked or neglected or not preached or taught in the past, but God raises up apostolic and prophetic men and women who can preach a particular truth. You know, it's interesting that sometimes God will give a, a, a minister an emphasis. It can be a certain focus and people will get upset because they'll say, well, that's all you preach about. Uh, there's more in the Bible than that. That's true. There are more things in the Bible beside one teaching, the prophetic or giving or prosperity or the apostolic or deliverance. But sometimes God will have a minister focus on a particular subject because the church have overlooked it for so long or the church has neglected it for so long or the church has not been set and established in it for a period of time. And so God wants that truth to be settled, established in the lives of people and so he'll give a minister a focus. Now, I do a lot of teaching on the prophetic and prophecy. It's not the only thing I talk about, but because many churches have never talked about this or activated people or trained people in the prophetic, I emphasize it because it's a truth that needs to be established in the church because it's been overlooked or undertaught. And so it's not the only thing I talk about. When I emphasize deliverance, people say, all you talk about are demons. It's not the only thing in the Bible, but I had to emphasize it because I had to establish that truth. And I'm not the only one that did this, but I had to establish that truth in the lives of people because deliverance was overlooked. It was neglected. Uh, it was undertaught. People were not established in it. But once we began to teach it and focus on it with an apostolic pioneering setting, establishing anointing, and people began to hear it over and over and over again. It not only was a message they heard and then forgot, it was a message that was, was, was established in their life that they can build their life on. They can build their life on the rock. And no matter what comes, you become unshakable, unmovable. You become one that is steadfast, 
one that is unwavering, one that is consistent because you have been set and established in truth. God wants his people to be established. Now, when you first get born again and saved, you begin to hear certain truths. You're not yet established in them. But if you continue to hear these truths and, and as the Bible says, believe in the Lord your God, trust in God, have faith in God, you will be established. It may take time. It may take a number of years to become established because the moment you begin to hear the word of God, the enemy tries to come to take that seed out of you, to cause you to be shaken, not to become set in a, a particular teaching. He uses people to try to talk you out of it. You know, you don't need that deliverance. You don't need all that prophetic. You don't need all that apostolic. And if you're not careful, you'll begin to waver in doubt and, and pull back from it. Uh, but they want to establish you in religion and tradition. Uh, so it's important to be established. God established his church. God will establish you. He will establish your ministry. He will establish your business. He will establish your career. He will establish your vision. He will establish you in faith, prosperity, giving, worship, glory, deliverance, healing, miracles. He'll establish you in the kingdom, in different truths and revelations of scripture. And so it's important to be established. And this, this season we're about to enter into, the 2020 season is a season in which God wants to establish you. God wants to take the double-mindedness, the instability, the wavering, the shakiness out of your life. And he wants to set your feet upon a rock. He wants to take you out of the clay, the miry clay, the sand, anything that's shifting and moving. Uh, he wants to take that out so you can become so steadfast and so unmovable. As the scripture says, be steadfast, be unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Now, the second part of this verse, 2 Chronicles 20, 20, if you believe in his prophets, you will prosper. And I've done some teaching on how prosperity is connected to the prophetic anointing. The scripture says in the book of Ezra, chapter five and verse two, that the Jews build it and prospered according to the prophesying of Haggai and Zechariah. They built it and prospered according to the prophesying of Haggai and Zechariah. So the word of the Lord will release you into a realm of prosperity. As a matter of fact, the reason why God sends prophets is because prophets have the ability to not only minister the current word of God, to build your faith, to build you up, to give you revelation. They also have the ability to correct you, adjust you, uh, cause you to repent, challenge anything in your life that is preventing you from prospering. God says in his word, I know the thoughts I have for you, thoughts of peace or good and not evil to bring you to an expected end. God takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. So God does want you to prosper. But many times there are things in our lives, such as unbelief, doubt, tradition, religion, fear, sin, rebellion, pride, uh, double-mindedness, insecurity, anger, bitterness. Uh, there can be a lot of things in our life that are preventing us from really obeying God and doing the will of the Lord and so prophets have an anointing to identify those things, to blast them, to, to, to preach against them, to get, get you delivered from them. The Bible said he sent his word and healed them and delivered them out of all of their destructions. The thing that would bring destruction, the word of the Lord comes, the prophetic word comes to deliver people. And so it, it releases you from blockage, obstruction, limitation, unbelief, doubt, small vision, things that prevent you from really prospering and breaking through. So the scripture says, if you believe in the Lord your God, you will be established. And if you believe his prophets, you will prosper. Second Chronicles 2020. And so this, this 2020 season is a season in which the prophetic words that have been spoken over your life previously. If they've not yet manifested, I believe God, they're going to manifest. 
and as they manifest and as you continue to hear the voice of God, hear the word of God, continue to be around the prophetic anointing, hear the song of the Lord. It's going to cause a prosperity, a favor, a breakthrough, a progress to come in your life. Believe in the Lord your God and you'll be established. Believe his prophets and you will prosper. Now, of course, we need the prophetic anointing and we need prophecy in order to give us the mind of God, the will of God, the plan of God, the vision of God, which when you follow, you will prosper. God's vision, God's plan for your life will bring success. God's vision and plan will never bring failure. It always brings success because God is committed to his plans and his purposes being fulfilled in your life. And God says, I will cause, I will watch over my word to perform it. So there is an advancing, there is a progress, there is a breakthrough, uh, there is a success that comes if you be willing and obedient. Isaiah chapter one, you'll eat the good of the land. And so when you're willing and you obey God's vision, God's plan for your life, God's purpose for your life, if you don't know it, prophetic ministry can help reveal it. Prophetic ministry can help bring light. Prophetic ministry can help give the strategies of God to you and give you insight into what God is saying to you personally. Um, I've just come out of two great activations. We had an activation in Vallejo, California. Uh, we had an activation in Charlotte, uh, North Carolina, where hundreds of people came and they began to get activated in the prophetic and receive prophetic words. And sometimes we're prophesying for hours and some people receive more prophetic words in two days that they receive and sometimes in the past four or five years because of the spirit of prophecy and the spirit of faith that is in these meetings. And when God begins to reveal to you his heart, his plan, his purpose for your life, and if you be willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. There's a level of prosperity and success that comes through the prophetic word. Again, prophets are not called just to come and rebuke and correct. When prophets do rebuke and correct, it's to get you back on track so that you can obey God and prosper. They don't come to destroy you and, and, and devastate your life. They come really to bring prosperity. And if there's any adjustment, any correction that needs to come in your life, prophets can bring that. So we're not saying that the word of God always has to be sweet and nice. Sometimes God does bring correction. It's done in love, but he can bring correction. He can bring adjustment through the prophetic word. The scripture says as many as the Lord loves, he rebukes and chastens. God can rebuke you. God can chasten you through a prophetic word, but it's for the purpose of getting you on track it's for the purpose of getting you in line. It's for the purpose of getting you uh, in proper uh, relationship with God so that you can begin to see breakthroughs and begin to see uh, prosperity and begin to see abundance. So we don't have to be afraid of the prophet. We don't have to be afraid of the prophetic. The prophetic comes to bless you, comes to edify, exhort, comfort you, comes to bring life, comes to bring adjustment, comes to bring deliverance and healing and miracles and breakthroughs and break limitations and bring prosperity and favor and release and impartation and activation. I have a book I've written called The Prophet's Manual. I would encourage you to get that because in that book, I talk about all the benefits of prophecy and why you should cover to prophesy and desire to prophesy. And you can get that book at amazon.com or christianbook.com, or you can get it at johneckhart.global. It's called the prophet's manual. It's not just for prophets, it's for all prophetic people that want to know more about prophecy, corporate prophecy, personal prophecy, prophetic teams, uh, uh, prophetic worship, prophetic counseling, prophetic intercession, the role of prophets. It's a pretty large book. It has a lot of information on my study and, and promotion of the prophetic in the last 30 years. So if you believe God's prophets, you will prosper. So I'm decreeing that this 2020 season will be a season of establishment and prosperity. I want you to grab this word. I want you to begin to confess this word, decree this word. Um, there are confessions in this book called It's My 2020 Season that you can confess and begin to put action to your faith. Now remember, faith works by speaking. 
Faith works by speaking. Mark 11, if you'll say unto this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and shall not doubt in your heart, but shall believe that the things that you say shall come to pass, you'll have whatever you say. Notice the word say is mentioned three times. The word believe is mentioned one time. If you'll say unto this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and shall not doubt in your heart, but shall believe that the things that you say shall come to pass, you'll have whatever you say. You can have what you say. I know people come against that teaching, but it's scriptural. You can have what you say. If you say it in faith, if you believe in, in your heart and do not doubt, you can have what you say. So when you begin to say that I'm entering into my 2020 season, I'm entering into a new season, I'm entering into a season of it being established, I will no longer be double-minded, I will no longer waver, I will no longer be inconsistent, I will no longer be up and down, in and out, all over the place, I'll be established upon a rock, I'll be rooted, I'll be grounded. When the winds come, when the floods come, I will not be shaken because I'll be established and I will believe the prophetic word and the prophets and I will prosper. And so I'm coming into a new season of prosperity as I hear God's word, God's voice, God's vision, God's dream for my life. And as I obey it, as I receive the prophetic word for my life, I'm gonna enter into a new realm of success and prosperity. See, when you begin to say that, when you begin to decree that, when you begin to believe the word of the Lord and you begin to put action to your faith and begin to speak it, begin to confess it, begin to begin to decree it, it's going to begin to happen in your life. You can have what you say, Mark eleven twenty two, 22, Mark eleven twenty three. have faith in God. For I say, if you'll say unto this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and shall not doubt in your heart, but shall believe that the things that you say shall come to pass. You can have whatever you say. So I want you to begin to believe God for this 2020 season. As you get ready to come into the natural year 2020 in less than three months, uh, believe God that it's going to be not just a natural 2020, it's going to be spiritual 2020. Um, as this shirt says, it's my 2020 season. And again, you can get these at apclub.global. You can order it. We'll send it to you. We have different colors. This is the hoodie. Okay. I'm not going to preach in the hoodie, but this is the hoodie. Nice and warm as we come into the fall months. Um, of course, we have t-shirts as well, but it's our confession. It's my 2020 season established and prospering. Now, I've been talking about the fact that the word prospering in the Hebrew means to rush. It means to rush. And I never knew that until I looked the word up. I know the word prosper means to progress, to be successful. It means to move ahead. But one of the definitions of the word prosper in 2 Chronicles 20, 20 is to rush. And so I began to study the word rush. The word rush means, usually it's a negative connotation. You know, don't rush, don't move too quickly, uh, don't get ahead. Uh, but in this context, it's a good word. It means to move speedily. It means to move quickly. Uh, it means to break through. And of course, on the day of Pentecost, there was a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And so it's connected to the Spirit of God. And I looked the word uh, when the Spirit of God came on Samson, when the Spirit of God came on David, when the Spirit of God came on Saul in the book of Judges and 1 Samuel, uh, the ESV version in the King James, it says the Spirit of God came upon them mightily. But in the ESV version, it said the Spirit of God rushed upon them. It rushed upon them. I thought that interesting because I know the verse in Acts 2 where the Spirit of God comes as a rushing mighty wind. One translation actually says this. It says the Spirit of God rushed upon Saul, that's King Saul, and he went out and defeated the Ammonites. But it, that one translation actually says this, the Spirit of God prospered Saul because the word rush means to prosper. And so the Spirit of God comes 
as a rushing mighty wind. Now, what that showed me is that the Spirit of God will rush upon your life or come upon you, whether you call it the baptism of the Holy Spirit, being filled with the Holy Spirit, being baptized in the Holy Spirit. Um, the Spirit of God comes upon you to prosper you. There is a prosperity that comes not only through the prophetic, but through the Holy Ghost. Because when you think about it, prophecy is really just words inspired by the Holy Ghost. And so the Spirit of God will prosper us. The Spirit of God will make us successful. The Spirit of God will cause us breakthroughs. And so I believe that this 2020 season is going to be a new rush of the Holy Ghost. That the Spirit of God is going to come upon people. At times, many of you are going to be baptized in the Holy Ghost or, or filled again with the Holy Ghost. Or the Spirit of God is going to come upon you strong like a wind. Uh, and out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. It's like a rush of water coming out of you. The word rush also represents a rushing river, a mighty river that breaks through its boundaries and overflows its banks. It's a symbol of power. It's a symbol of might, but it's a symbol of prosperity. And I believe that we've taught a lot about prosperity in the church in the last 20 or 30 years. But we've kind of lost the fact that we need to do this by the Holy Ghost. It's not by might. It's not by power. It's by the Spirit. God gave a word to Zerubbabel in the, in the prophecy of Zechariah. Zerubbabel was the one sent from Babylon back to the land to rebuild the temple. And the temple was not being rebuilt because of the discouragement of the people. But God raised up Zechariah and Haggai. And God gave a word to Zechariah, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. In other words, you're going to prosper and you're going to build this temple, but it's not going to be by your might or your power. It's going to be by my spirit. In other words, there's a rush of the spirit of God that's coming upon you, Zerubbabel. And it's because of my grace, anointing power that you're going to be successful in building this temple even though there were people in the land that were trying to stop them from building. In other words, the rush of the Spirit of God will come upon you and it will cause you to be able to break through opposition, break through enemies, break through barriers, break through restrictions that will try to prevent you from being successful and being prosperous. So think of the Holy Ghost as more than just speaking in tongues more than just feeling something. The Holy Ghost has been sent as a rushing wind upon your life to prosper you, to break you through your business, your career, your ministry, your church, your vision. That's why we need the anointing. That's why you need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. That's why sometimes you need a fresh impartation of the Spirit of God. That's why sometimes you need to receive a gift, as Paul told Timothy, stir up the gift of God that is in you, that was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of hands of the elders. There was an impartation. There was a rush of gifts into his life that caused him to be able to prosper in his ministry. We talk about impartation. We talk about activation. We talk about the rush of the Holy Ghost. It comes upon you to equip you for service so that you can break through. And it's, again, it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by the Spirit, says the Lord. So another way of looking at 2 Chronicles 20, 20, if you believe in the Lord your God, you will, uh, uh, you will be established. If you believe in his prophets, you will experience a rush. You will experience a rush. You will prosper. You will experience a rush. It could be a rush of favor, a rush of grace. A rush of power. The word rush, by the, by the way, means a large quantity coming, often in a short period of time. It can be a rush of favor. So we're confessing as we come to 2020, I'm going to experience a rush of favor, a rush of miracles, a rush of finances, a rush of authority, a rush of wisdom, a, a, a rush of blessing, a rush of water, a rush of the spirit of God, a rush of the wind of God, a rush of the rain of God, not only rushing toward you, but also out of your belly shall flow rivers or it will rush out of your life 
and be a blessing. God will anoint your head with oil and cause your cup to run over. There'll be an overflow. There'll be such an, a, an amount until not only will you be filled up, but you will overflow. And I'm calling this your rush season. Confess it's my rush season. I'm going to experience the rush of God. I'm going to experience. And look at all the verses I've been posting on my Facebook page about rush. I've been posting all kinds of scripture, which talks about breakthrough, rush, river, outpour, downpour, power, blessings, favor, the spirit of God. I've been using that hashtag rush. So if you look up hashtag rush, you'll see probably well over a hundred verses now that I've posted. And I'm going to, I'm going to put this book together called it's my rush season about prospering according to the prophetic. So let's look at it this way. If you believe his prophets or if you believe the prophetic word, you'll experience a rush. You'll prosper. So when the prophetic word comes, it releases a rush into your life. Things that were slow, things that it took you years to do. All of a sudden, there's an acceleration. There's a momentum. There's a speed. There's a progress. There's an advancing that begins to come in your life. The prophetic word can break delay. The prophetic word can break slowness. The prophetic word can break obstruction. The prophetic word can break things that are hindering you and slowing you down. The prophetic word can release a rush in your life and that rush can begin to accelerate you or move you forward speedily and cause you to move quicker than you've been moving in the past. There's so many people you've been slowed down by religion, by tradition, by witchcraft, by doubt, by fear, by unbelief. You've been slowed down by people, by environments. It's hindered you, but believe as prophets. Believe that prophetic word and it will bring a rush. It will cause you to accelerate. It will cause you to break through. It will cause you to move forward. It'll cause you to pick up speed. That's what prosperity means. It'll cause you to break through like a rushing river, like a rushing wind. That's why this prophetic release is so important. That's why the ministry of prophets is so important because when they prophesy into a church, into a family, into a business, into a personal life. It releases the rush of God, the wind of God, the river of God, the power of God, the breakthrough of God. It releases speed and acceleration and momentum. It causes you to rise up and begin to run forward and begin to move forward, begin to progress, begin to break through, begin to be a success and begin to prosper. So that's our vision. 2020. It's our 2020 season. Now this is from one verse. You know, the more I study verses and I'll read different translations of second Chronicles 2020, look up synonyms, look up the Hebrew, the look up the different words, ask God to open the scripture up to me because I believe there's scriptures that we've read and heard many times before, but God wants to give us a greater revelation of it, a greater understanding of it, greater insight into it so that we can really have faith and really take that word and walk in that word and, and speak that word and one word can turn your whole situation around. So if you feel that the decade of 2010 to 2020 has been slow for you. You've not been moving. You've been stuck. You've been behind. You can't, you can't seem to move ahead. I want you to believe that in this next season, I want you to confess that in this next season, I want you to hear this prophetic word that in this next season, 2020, you're going to have a rush season. You're going to have a 2020 season. You're going to be established and you're going to prosper. Now, remember, don't put the prosperity before the establishing because you have to be established to handle the prosperity that God wants to send you. Too much prosperity can really mess people up if they're not established in truth and righteousness and holiness and faith and love and mercy and humility. Too much at one time can actually hurt people. So you do need to be established. You need to be beset. So when the, when the blessings of God come, sometimes we look at, you know, when things come that are bad, they'll knock us away and knock us down. But sometimes too much good stuff, you, you'll get proud, you'll get ar arrogant, you can't handle it, it will mess you up. So you do need to be established 
in love, humility, truth, the word of God, so that when all this comes, it won't change you. You won't backslide. You won't forget God. You won't leave God. You're establishing the truth. You're establishing righteousness. You're establishing holiness. You're establishing the word of God. You're establishing humility, especially humility. You're establishing righteousness. You're established in the love of God. You're establishing forgiveness and mercy and grace. You're establishing in those truths that when blessings come, instead of you, instead of it destroying you, instead of you not being able to handle it, you can really handle. I heard a preacher, I think T.D. Jakes did a message years ago, can you stand to be blessed? What a sermon. Can you stand to be blessed? Everyone wants the blessing of God. The blessing of the Lord makes rich, but can you handle it? Can you handle promotion? Can you handle new doors, new platforms, new relationships? Can you handle success? Can you handle it if you're not established, if you're not set in truth? Will it change you? Will it shake you? And so if you believe in the Lord your God, which means you cannot put your faith in people. You cannot put your faith in man. You have to put your trust in God. This is the greatest battle that many people have. They put more faith faith in their flesh. They put more faith in man. They put more faith in organizations, churches, denominations, or even leaders. They make them idols instead of putting their trust in God. In, in this next season, you must put your absolute trust in God and God alone. You must put nothing before God. You must trust him, wait upon him, believe in him, no matter what it looks like. You must have unwavering faith in God. You must walk by faith and not by sight. Again, you must walk by faith and not by sight. You must believe God no matter how it looks. You trust God. You know that God is good, that God has spoken to you, that God has given you a word. He's going to bring it to pass. Imagine Joseph sitting in a, in a prison and years away from his family, and yet God gave him a vision. God gave him a prophetic dream that one day his father and his family would bow down and submit to him, and he's stuck in a prison being lied on uh, and, and being sold by his brethren. He only had to hold on to that word. That's all he had, and the scripture says until the the word of the Lord came, the word tested him, the word tried him. And eventually Joseph interpreted Pharaoh's dream and went from the prison to the palace, went from being a prison guard to being second in command in Egypt. Why? Because he trusted God. He had to keep his eyes on God in spite of the situation he was in. That's what it means to be established in faith. That what what it means not to allow doubt to shake you, to discourage you, to be depressed, to get your eyes off the ball, get your eyes off the vision. We have to trust God. If you believe God, you will be established. If you believe his prophets, you will prosper. 2020, 2 Chronicles 2020. If you believe his prophets, you will experience a rush. You'll experience a wind. You'll experience a river. You'll experience the might and power of God. You'll experience breakthroughs and you'll experience momentum and you'll experience speed that you've not had before. So I want you to grab this word. Again, this book is available. It's my 2020 season. It really talks about how God established the church, why you need to be a part of that. It's established by God. They that be, here's a good one. They that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of their God. To be planted means to be rooted, grounded, established. It says you'll flourish. That's prosperity. If you be, are planted, you will flourish. That's prosperity. That's blessing. That's favor. And so there is a planting in God's house. There is an establishing in the work of God. There's an establishing in the kingdom of God that causes you to flourish in the courts of God. I'm talking about good church. I'm not talking about just any place. Being established in the ministry that God sends you to. Good apostolic prophetic churches, churches of worship and faith and the word and healing and deliverance and good leadership. You planted in that, you'll flourish, you'll prosper in the courts of God. And so we're going to pray. I want to release the word of the Lord. Thank you for coming on and sharing. If you just come on, please share. If you're on Facebook Live, get this word out. To as many people, this is a special broadcast I'm doing tonight. I usually don't do evening broadcasts. I usually do them in the morning. 
And, I, and of course, we have people that signed up uh, through the Zoom. Thank you so much for meeting this 2020 challenge. We're getting ready to do another Write It challenge as well. So we're going to do Write It too. I want you to sign up for that. All you writers and authors um, that want to write, we're going to talk about editing and publishing books that's coming up um, October the 15th. We're going to be doing that. So if you missed that, um, you can sign up for that as well at apclub.global. And um, you can also get this book. But Father, I thank you for the new season that you're bringing us into. Isaiah 42 and 9 says, Behold, the former things have come to pass, and new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Lord, before new things come, you declare it. You speak it to us. You release your word over us. And Father, I thank you that this prophetic word is releasing the new thing that you want to do. As I prophesy this 2020 season, it's a word that brings us out of an old season into a new season. And Lord, I thank you that those that are watching, I decree and prophesy that it will be a season of being set, rooted, grounded, planted, establishment upon a rock that nothing will come to shake you, move you. It's a season of deliverance from double-mindedness and wavering and doubting. It's a season of being steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. And Lord, I thank you. It's a season in which those who've not trusted God are going to repent and trust God. People that put their trust in man or the flesh are going to repent and turn away from that and put their trust in you. Lord, we can't even put trust in ourselves, in our own flesh. For it's not by power, it's not by might, but it's by your spirit. And so, Father, I decree and prophesy it's going to be a season of trusting God, a new season. It's going to be a season of being established. And, Lord, it's going to be a, a new prophetic season in which we're going to believe your prophets and your prophetic word. And it's going to be a season of prosperity and a season of the rush, a season of momentum and speed a season of moving forward, a season of success and prosperity. Father, I decree it, I speak it, I prophesy it, and I release it. And I thank you, Lord, that this is the day that you have made. We thank you, Lord, that now you're speaking to us. You're revealing your secrets to your servants, the prophets. You're causing your prophetic winds to blow. And the Lord said, I'm causing a new wind to blow. And I'm causing a new river to flow. It'll be a wind of power and might. It'll be a river of power and might. And wherever this wind blows and wherever this river flows, it will, it will break through the limitations and the things that have restricted you. And truly, my spirit shall come like a fresh wind of breath. I will breathe upon you. I'll cause my rush to come upon many of you, said the Lord, that shall cause a new breakthrough and a new success not only in the church, but also in the marketplace, says the Lord. So the Lord said, we receive the wind of my spirit and know it's not by might or power, but it's by my spirit that this will be done. Do not depend upon your strength, but even depend upon the strength of my spirit. For some have walked away from the power and anointing of the spirit of God. And the Lord said, I'm calling you back to the power of my spirit. I'm calling you back to the wind of my spirit. I'm calling you back to the might of my spirit. And I'm causing a new gust, a new thrust, a new rush of my spirit in prosperity to come upon you, said the Lord, so receive the wind as my word comes forth. I even make my, my ministers spirits. I, I make my ministers, my, <coughs> my angels spirits. I make them winds. I make them breaths. And my angels shall come with wind. They shall come like winds. And they shall come to break you through. And they shall come to help you break through. Even angelic assistance. As my word goes out. As my winds come, said the Lord. It'll not just be the wind of my spirit. It'll be angels coming like winds uh, into your situation to come with speed. And to come as the answer to your prayers. And the result of the prophetic word to cause breakthrough. And you'll see miracles. And you'll see breakthrough in your finances, your ministries, your careers, your businesses. You'll see acceleration and momentum for my wind shall carry you and my wind shall pick you up and my wind shall thrust you forward and my wind shall be under your wings and you'll soar and you'll fly with speed and you'll move with, with faster than you've ever moved before. So get ready for a new wind, said the Lord. As you come into this new season, it's going to be a season of the wind. 
It's going to be a season of the rush. It's going to be a season of prosperity. It's going to be a season of newness and freshness. It's going to be a season of my breath. It's going to be a season when I blow upon you. It's going to be a season of the new, says God. It's a 2020 season that I bring you into a season of new vision, of clarity, of sight that you've never had before, of dreams and revelations that you've never known before. A season when I open your eyes to your my plans and purposes for your life and open my your eyes to scripture you've never seen before, never understood before. So receive my word as I breathe upon you, as I blow upon you, as my wind comes, as my prophetic word is released uh, and come into that new season and walk into that new season. Father, I speak it, I release it, I decree it, and I prophesy it now over their lives. And I thank you, Lord, for doing something new and something fresh in their life. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, don't forget this 2020 season hoodie or t-shirt. Go to apclub.global. Oh, I'm sorry. It's it's um to sew. Okay, hand it to me. To sew if you want to give. Now, this was a free um, challenge. If you want to sew, um, you can do it by Cash App at, 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 at dollar sign AP Club. If this word blessed you, you want to sew into what we're doing, or you can go to PayPal at paypal.me, there it is, paypal.me slash apbooks, paypal.me slash apbooks. I want you to sow something if you've not done so ever before at this um, uh, AP club. I want you to do it. We have a lot that we're doing around the country, activations, prophetic release, and I believe that as you sow into this word, if it bless your life, those that are watching by Facebook as well, paypal.me slash apbooks, or your cash app at um, AP Club, AP Club. I want you to sow something. And so into what we're doing, if you want to go to John Eckhart Global, you can do it there as well at John Eckhart Global. I've been, I've been, as a matter of fact, I've been encouraging people to sow 20, 20 seeds, uh, $20 and 20 cents, just as a seed that talks about my 2020 uh, season, $20 and 20 cents, just as a prophetic act of giving and to sow that, you can sow a 2020 seed. You can sow a $2,020 seed. It's up to you. Put, put a prophetic act of giving to your believing. And believe God, if you want a rush in your finances, a rush in your business, a rush uh, in your accounts, believe God for a rush of finances to hit your account by sowing into what we're doing through this challenge, uh, through this uh, AP Club challenge, uh, or through John Eckhart Global, and um, I decree that there'll be a rush, and I speak by faith, a rush over your finances, a rush in your business, a rush of favor, a rush of financial favor, a rush of the wind of God to blow out poverty and lack, and to blow in prosperity and abundance. So sow that seed again, a 2020 seed, or if you want to do uh, forty dollars, two twenties, or if you want to sow anything. Uh, even greater, do it at those websites that we've offered tonight. And I, I prayed and I prophesied and I decreed and I taught on this subject. It's my 2020 season. Grab that word, walk in that word, be established in that word, begin to confess and decree that word. And I believe that you're going to come into it by faith. And I'm going to be talking more about it as we get ready the next three months to come into 2020. Believe God for the best is yet to come and believe God for something new and fresh. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching tonight. I speak shalom, favor, and grace over your life. God bless you and thank you.